Hey guys, what's going on? It's Majin Bay. Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to talk about how to TFT or more specifically, how to learn TFT. Uh, this is going to be a guide that's basically going to tell you the very, very basics of TFT, uh, just enough for you to like kind of dip your toes in. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to talk uh, some more strategy stuff and let you know what you should focus on, what I think you should focus on improving at various points. Um, this is what I would have done if I had to restart today, which is honestly not too far from the truth. I have only recently gotten very, very into TFT. Um, and so my learning process started not too long ago as well. So I remember exactly what it's like <laughs> to be learning TFT from ground zero, basically how overwhelming it is, um, not really knowing what to work on, not understanding why I'm losing, not understanding why I'm winning. And I think some of the guides that people put out uh, can be a little too over your head <laughs> in the beginning. This guide is supposed to get people who play other games, strategy games, mostly card games, because that's what I play, get their foot in the door for TFT. And then you can go from there. You can watch more complicated guides. Maybe I'll make more complicated guides. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. Uh, just just enough to get you so that you can enjoy team fight tactics. So I think it's such a good game. <laughs> and I hope that other I hope this enables other people to try it who would otherwise be overwhelmed like I was when I started. Uh, so who am I? Uh, my name's Caleb <laughs> or Majin Bay, as most people know me. I play a lot of card games. I'm pretty good at them, at most of them. Uh, and I played a little bit of TFT because of the box box boot camps for a couple seasons. I would basically like try really hard for the boot camps for like two weeks and then not really touch TFT after that, even though I enjoyed it because I would focus on, you guessed it, card games. Wow. Uh, until set like 9.5, I really, really, really just enjoyed the boot camp and playing TFT and I wanted to get better. So that's what I did. I spent more effort on actually learning how to TFT and not just how to try to get my rank up in two weeks, right? There's a difference. I think there's a difference. And so I remember <laughs> what that struggle was like. <laughs> and I remember how overwhelmed I felt and how people's advice didn't really do a lot for me because it was the advice was either over my head, I wasn't ready for it, or it wasn't exactly what I needed. It was maybe too topical for the patch or something, you know, oh, just play this unit is good advice for gaining LP now, but it's not good advice for gaining LP forever. It's, it's not actually teaching me how to get better. So this is going to be, again, a guide on how to get into TFT. Real, real basics to start with. What is a TFT game? Like I said, we're starting with the very, very, very basics. If you haven't played TFT, welcome. Uh, games are lobbies of eight players. There are eight players competing against each other, uh, usually of the same-ish rank. And basically, every round you fight someone, your team fights their team. Whoever loses, loses some health. The amount of health depends on how far you enter the game and how many units are still left on board. When you reach zero HP, you are dead. The top four players gain LP and the bottom four players lose LP. This is interesting for a multitude of reasons. One of the reasons is that you're not always looking to take first. Wins and losses are not binary in TFT. Uh, a fourth place is still a win, even though you only get 10 LP and maybe you would have gotten 50 if you got first, right? But because fifth is minus 10 LP, the difference between fourth and fifth is basically infinite, right? You're going in a completely different direction. So a lot of the skill in TFT isn't always playing for first. A lot of the skill in TFT is, mm, I'm not in a very good spot. Let's try to turn the seventh into a fifth. And I find that very refreshing coming from card games where wins are binary. I either won the game or I lost the game. It can be frustrating sometimes because I always like to play for first. I'm incredibly greedy, uh, but I think it's, I think it does a lot of really interesting things for the game. So let's talk about the heart and soul of TFT, the units. Um, units cost anywhere from one to five gold. And the power level, for the most part, kind of scales up with their cost, right? Uh, for example, Katarina is going to be stronger than Evelyn, for the most part. We'll get into it, because she costs an extra gold. Uh, if you get three of the same unit, so if I have two Evelyns and I buy another Evelyn from the shop, my Evelyn will star up into a two-star Evelyn. And generally, it's like 
a lot stronger. <laughs> I think about the same amount. Like a two star Evelyn is much better than two Evelyns on the board, for example, right? Units also have um, traits. We're going to get into that in the next little section. But if you pair the traits, see how both of these have Crowd Diver, uh, you're going to get bonuses. And that is what a lot of the comp composition or team building aspect of TFT is about. You want to match traits for the most part. You can see I included a little trait web over here. Um, these traits have various numbers you have to hit. Uh, so here we have a guardian. We have four guardian here. Each increment, when you hit this increment, you get this bonus. So if you only have one guardian, you do not have a guardian bonus. But once you have two, then this ability activates. Once per combat at 50% health, guardians shield themselves and their closest ally for a percent of their max health. It's 25%. If you can get four, it's 45%. If you can get six, it's 70%. Obviously, the power scales the more guardians you get, right? It gets the ability gets stronger. However, some units are better than others. So it's not always better to just go, oh, I have two guardian. Let me just see if I can get six guardian because that's more powerful. A lot of times what you want to do is just play two guardians that are really good that also complement your strategy. So for example, if you're already playing country, it's really easy to splash in one extra guardian and now you have a stronger front line because your thresh gets the guardian effect and you still have your country for the, the rest of your board. Don't worry if that's a little too much. We'll get into it. Um, usually, yeah, you want to buy around the same traits. Uh, and it's pretty easy to figure out kind of where you want to end up. Uh, there's this little bullet point that I added. Comps can be net decked just like decks can. And I think that's really important. There's a lot of stat sites. I use like tactics.tools, meta TFT. There's even mobilitics, all that kind of stuff. Where you can see, hey, this composition has been winning a lot. It'll show you, hey, it's these eight units. Uh, it gives you all these abilities. And you're supposed to put your items on this unit. You can just take that and go try to play that. It's going to be difficult because you, you won't always get the units that you want when you need them. And you'll have to like play other things for a time. And that's where the knowledge in TFT comes in. Where you need to know, okay, what can I use to fill in the gaps as I'm working towards this ultimate board right? that I'm trying to build? Uh, TFT has a lot of really, really big knowledge checks. It's just, there's so, so, so much information. And the more you know, the more you are capable of, the more you can offset your bad RNG and really take advantage of your good RNG. But I talk about ways to kind of not minimize it, but ways to uh, make it so it's not so overwhelming later in the video. Um, we call... Uh, doing a lot of one traits, remember I said the six guardian example, that's called going vertical. As you can see, KDA goes all the way up to 10. So if you have seven to 10 KDA, you would say it's a vertical KDA comp. I don't know why we call it that. I think it's just because it's tall instead of wide. But yeah, so we would say KDA vertical. Here I have an example little board that I made. You can just go on tactics.tools and you can make boards uh, and it'll show you all of the things that you're getting here. It's very helpful. You can like practice putting stuff out but basically what we have here is we have some kda units you can see the k's we have five kda giving us a bonus three super fan units up front giving us three super fan uh Kenan and nico are guardians that's a synergy right and then we'll usually tech in like another spell weaver or one of these will be headliner don't worry about it but basically what we're doing is you can see i'm taking advantage of a lot of synergies by with only six units, I can do a lot of things. And then if we add an Echo, who's not here, I don't know why I didn't put in there, uh, we add another true damage and another Sentinel, giving us a very wide trait web. It's a very synergistic board, right? These are the kind of, this is what a comp would be. You know, This is what you're trying to achieve. Um, you won't always get it, and that's why you need to be a little bit more flexible and have a lot more knowledge of the game and the units and the patches and everything, but we'll get to that, don't worry. Next up, items. Uh, items, I said this, items are very, very important, and I feel like I'm understating it there. Uh, you don't really know that in the beginning when you first start playing TFT, but items are probably more important than the units. Uh, same thing with League of Legends, right? If you're playing a mid laner 
and you build AD items when you're an AP champ, you're not going to do anything, right? Same thing with like, if you don't build tank items on your top lane tank, on your front line or whatever, it's gonna just get shredded and not do anything. It's really important that you know what the items do and which ones the champions prefer. There is a nice way to tell. We'll go over it in a second. Basically how it works is you have these things called components over here. That These are the ones on the top and the uh, left side. It's just like a component League of Legends. If you fuse two components together by putting them both on a champion, they turn into a completed item. For example, if I have a BF sword and a bow, I make Giant Slayer. Just put them on, make Giant Slayer, right? Uh, if you right-click the components, it will show you everything you can make by pairing the other components to it, right? So if I right-click a sword, I will basically get this drop-down. It's very, very, very helpful. Do that a lot until you have them all memorized, right? Um, a lot of times, you'll be slamming items early in the game, even if it's not what the guide says that champion should play, right? So maybe I want... On my Jinx, I want Rage Blade, I want Death Blade, and I want Runin's Hurricane, right? But I can get Rage Blade, and I can make some other items. Maybe I go Rage Blade, Giant Slayer, Red Buff. It's not exactly what the guide called for, but it does a lot of the same thing. You still have AD, you still have attack speed, and you have some kind of like damage multiplier. Uh, so... It's not exactly what the guide says, but if I sit there and greed for exactly the items that the guide says, I'm going to lose HP. I might not be able to streak my wins, which is important for reasons we'll get into. Uh, oftentimes, it's better to slam an item that's 80% good than to wait for one that's 100% good. There are exceptions. You will learn it as you go. But for now, just know that having more items on board, for the most part, equals good, right? Uh, the last thing is there's carousel rounds in TFT where in the middle of every stage, you'll just see a carousel of units with items on top of their heads, uh, and then you draft them. Basically, you, you run out in order of less life to most life, grab a unit with an item on top of its head. When you first start playing, it's probably going to be very enticing for you to just grab whichever unit fits your comp the most. I highly recommend that for the most part, you go after the items that you need, not the units. There will be exceptions when you're like, oh, I really need to three-star this guy. There's the, th the echo that I need to get the three star or whatever, right? But for the most part, getting good items on your units uh, will be more important than getting the good units on carousel. Here I have the, um, sorry, uh, the new like unit tooltip thing, information window that they added. It's, it's fantastically useful. Uh, you can see they right clicked Samira. It tells you a lot of things about Samira. If you hover over the ability, it will tell you exactly what the ability does and what it scales with. Um, it tells you about where you should put her. She's a backliner. She has four hex range. She's a long ranged AD carry, right? These are the items you put on her. This is, tells you, yeah, attack carry. She's an attack carry. If you hover over this thing, it will give you a list of some recommended items. Now, this is just items that happen to coincide with the class. So it's not specified for that particular champion. But if you're feeling a little bit like, oh, I have no idea what to do with this hero or champion or whatever we call it in League, um, you can just hover this thing and it will give you a list of options. And you can go, oh, I thought this was a, you know, I thought Nico was a mage, but clearly she's a tank. I need to be putting tank items on my Nico, right? Then there's the stats and stuff and a quick sell button, which you'll never use. Very useful window, though. I really like that they added this, and I'm still constantly reading my champion's abilities. Okay, money. All about money. TFT is a strategy game. It's a resource management game. Um, that's important. <laughs> money is basically like drawing cards in a card game, you know? And so it's really important to get the most value out of your money. Money equals power. I wrote it right here. Money equals power. Remember that. Lots of money. Being rich equals powerful. There are other ways to gain power in the game, but money is the like most direct. Uh, you get five gold every round. And then for every increment of 10 gold you have at the end of round, you earn another gold in interest up to 50. You can see here, if you hover over your gold thing, it'll give you a breakdown of what's expected. Um, here we have our five gold for the round. We have 50 gold, so we get five in interest. And we are uh, we have a streak going on. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. We have a streak going on. 
which is giving us plus one gold as well. We're currently getting 11 gold. If we continue to win, we will get more gold. You get one gold for win, zero gold for losses, but uh, win streaks and loss streaks can give you more gold as well. More on that later. Sorry I'm yawning so much. Uh, when I monologue, I forget to breathe, <laughs> and so it makes me yawn a lot. I'm not tired. I just forget how to talk. Um, I also put that uh, you should try to stop clicking the money augments. This one is more a note to myself because uh, I'm going to fail to stop clicking the money augments, and then I'm going to go eighth because I have no combat augments, but I have lots of money. I recommend when you're offered augments, these are like random power-ups that you get every single game, you take the ones that directly translate to actual combat power as much as possible. The money augments are really fun, and if used correctly, you get a lot of power out of them. But they have to be balanced around what very, very talented, smart players know how to like to use with their money. Uh, so they tend to be weaker if you don't know what you're doing. Recommend taking combat augments first. It also leaves you less things to think about, which is very nice. You will get dizzy, which means that you're getting overwhelmed and you don't know what to do. Levels. Um, your levels increase the amount of units that you can play on the board. So it's directly proportional. If I'm level four, I will have four units on the board, right? Also, your odds increase of higher cost champions the more you level up. Remember, higher cost champions generally more powerful. Sometimes you don't want to level. That's important. Uh, let's say you're rolling for Jinx 3. You really want Jinx 3 star. Jinx is a one cost unit. You have the highest chance of hitting Jinxes the lower level you are. So you will wait as long as possible to level, usually until after you hit your Jinx 3, because you need to hit her first. And if you start leveling, it's going to be much, much, much more difficult for you to hit her, and you're going to be spending too much money re-rolling your shop later in the game. Uh, you get 2 XP every single round, and you can buy more XP for 4 gold for increments of 4. So it's basically 1 gold equals 1 XP, but you can only trade it in increments of 4. Uh, and I believe, yep, here we go. I have a little odds chart here for the current set, set 10. You see that if you're level three, you have a 75% chance of a one cost and a 25% chance of a two cost. You can't even hit the higher ones. So if we're re-rolling for Jinx, like in our example, but then we level all the way up to seven instead of staying on four, we have a 19% chance of hitting a one cost in our shop at all. That makes it really, really, really hard to hit your one cost. Also, this is important. I didn't really talk about this, but you share a pool of champions with the entire rest of the... Um, with the entire rest of the pod, right, of, of the eight-man game. Everyone shares the same champions, pool of champions. So of each of the 13 one cost, there are 22 of them. That means if it takes nine to three-star a unit, that means that only two people can three-star one one cost. That doesn't happen super often. There's usually not a lot of one cost worth rolling for. I think in the game right now, there's like two. Um, so I won't worry about that too much, but it does become important when we get to things like the four costs and the five costs, where if someone else is playing your four costs that you want, it's going to be very, very, very hard for you to find them. If two people already have two star Ezreal who costs four, right, then there's only four Ezreals left in the entire pool. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to find them. All right, now let's talk about strategy. Let me take a little sip of water. So at this point in the video, hopefully you understand a little bit about what TFT is. You've probably played a few games already. If not, maybe go try a game, just get a feel for it or watch someone else play. Let's talk day one strategy. This is what you need to know to not completely make a fool of yourself. Not that anybody cares. Um, you should try to hit your econ interest thresholds. This is very important. If you watch high level players, they're constantly focusing and planning all of their plays around hitting these 10 money increments, right? 10, 30, 50, whatever, to get the maximum interest. This is important. If you know how compound interest works, <laughs> that's why it's important, right? You make, if failing to make 10 loses you a gold and will take, now it's going to take you an extra turn to hit 20, which loses you another gold. Now it's going to take you an extra turn to hit 40, which is losing you two more gold. You see how that kind of like snowballs out of control. Um, you're going to suck at capping boards. Capping boards means when you get to the later stages of the game, you're looking to add as much power to the board as possible. Uh, and you need to kind of know which units are just good units and which fits your strategy more. Um, for example, not all units 
are equal, obviously. Uh, there's a kind of like thing in card games where it's basically we call a card on rate or above rate or below rate. Basically what it means, if every two mana unit in the game has two power and two health, then if there's a two mana unit that has two power and three health, that unit is above rate. It is better than the other things of the same cost. TFT is the same. There are units that are just strictly better than other units on the board. Maybe the other unit's synergies are better. Maybe the power budget in that trait goes to different units, right? But some three cost units are going to be better than other three cost units. Things like Urgot. An early Urgot with really good items is going to do a lot of work for you in the current patch that I'm speaking in, <laughs> right? Um, so you need to know which units are really good and which units aren't really good when you just see them. Oh my God, I have a two-star Thresh. Should I put that out? Is that even good? I don't even have Guardian Synergies. Ah, oh, sorry. Or like, I don't have Country Synergies. Should I still be like looking to play this unit over this other unit? You're not going to know. So I wouldn't go for the big late game strategies. Think things like Heart Steel or whatever Econ trait or Augment gets offered. Um, I think you should just play things that are stronger earlier and through the mid game because until you know what's really good late you're gonna it's gonna the late game is gonna be very difficult for you focus on spiking your power a bit earlier even if it comes at the cost of later economy later you can fix this but for now this is going to save you from starting off strong and then going eighth right uh i recommend that you slam flexible items early we talked about this a little bit um you can learn later when it's okay to greed for, for BIS or best in slot, which means the best possible items you can have on a unit. Remember the Rage Blade, Death Blade, uh, whatever I said, Jinx example? That would be considered BIS. I don't know what her actual BIS is. I don't play Jinx. <laughs> um, but it's all usually more important to just get items on your things earlier. Even if they're not exactly the right items, it's going to save you a lot of health. And like I mentioned, you're going to suck at capping your boards. Focus on preserving your HP. One of the best ways to preserve HP is to slam flexible items. Things like Giant Slayer can be played in basically any comp. Giant Slayer, Warmogs, Sunfire, right? A lot of these things, and you'll learn more about this as you go on. Uh, you could play it in. You could play it in basically anything. Is it ideal? Probably not. But does it work? Yeah, and it works good enough to save you some health. And that's what we care about, right? Um, usually, good units are better than just enabling traits the majority of the time. There's going to be a lot of spots where you're like, oh, man, I can get 7 KDA, but then I have to play my one-star Evelyn and my one-star Akali with no items on either of them. Or I could play 5 KDA and 4 Sentinel, really giving me a much stronger front line. I get to play 2-star Blitzcrank, right? I have this 2-star Mordekaiser hanging around. That's going to be much stronger. Um, than just going vertical with worse units. And a different example is, let's not even add another trait, right? Instead of having four Sentinel, you just have Ziggs. It's just a five cost, no synergies. But what Ziggs does is he applies Shred to your opponent's team, making him very valuable even if he's not contributing to your trait web, right? It might not be as flashy as having seven KDA, but he is just a strictly better unit than Evelyn or Kali with no items. So you should just play Six. You'll figure this out kind of as you go. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Just know that if you have like a two star four cost, it's probably better to put that in instead of your one star one cost that adds to your trait synergy. Uh, you should look up your augment average places. So placements, sorry. When you get your augments, it's going to be three times a game. They're going to offer you three choices and you can roll each of them once every single stage. You should look them up every time. <laughs> There are uh, things you can, I think Mobilytics has like an overlay where it will show you the, per, the win, per, the average placements, average placement percentage of each augment in the game for you, um, which is very helpful. You should look at the average placement because in TFT, some augments are simply unclickable, meaning they're so bad <laughs> that you lose an average place, right? And if you would normally get fourth, now you get fifth because the augment's so bad. And you'll have literally no way of knowing unless you're playing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games. So you should just look it up. Just look it up and go, hmm, okay. So this one has a 4.3 average placement. That's pretty good. 
This one has a 4.8. We can discount this one. And this one has a 4.4, very close to the 4.3. Then you look at the two of them, you read them, you think critically, I know you're capable of this, even though Twitch Strat tries really hard to prove me wrong. <laughs> look at them, think critically, what works best for my thing? This one is very good for AP comps. It wants things that are casting a lot. My comp doesn't do that. I have auto attackers. This one adds a burn effect onto my auto attacks. Let's take that. It makes more sense. You get what I'm saying? Look up the average placement. Use that to help make an educated decision about what augment to take after that. Um, and the last point is data is your friend. You should be looking up everything. Like I said, Teamfight Tactics is a huge knowledge check like gigantic, the knowledge cliff or whatever is very high. Uh, and the more you know, the more options are available to you and the better decisions you will make. So that's like, that's what you should do. You're in your second game of TFT ever. This is what I want you to think about, right? Just these things. Now, as we move a little bit further, this is how you're gonna get better. If you played a couple games, you kind of, you know, you, you know what's happening in a game of TFT now. You've seen it. You're not as overwhelmed every single turn. You know things like, oh, maybe I should level here. Everyone else levels here, right? Oh, I really like Zed. I think he's cool. You know, you, you're kind of you're kind of figuring out a little bit. Now you want to get better. Here's what I recommend. I think you should one trick a comp. Some people will tell you you shouldn't. You should play flex. Don't listen to them. One trick comp. Find something you think is cool. I love Seraphine Reroll. I think it's sick. I'm going to play it every single goddamn game, right? Do that. It minimizes the things you have to think about. You just need to learn how to play Seraphine Reroll. Don't think about anything else. You're going to play Seraphine Reroll every single game. Get really good at it. Because what you're going to do when you do this is you're going to go, hey, that Nico unit is really good. <laughs> and it does a lot for me. Getting super fan trait early is winning me a lot of fights. I should focus on that more, right? Or, hmm, adding echo as soon as possible gives my front line a lot of extra oomph I've been noticing. You know what I mean? You, you learn things like this. When I don't have Seraphine, Sen is a really good placeholder. She kind of holds the items really well, and she does a really good job of getting me through the early stages. You're going to learn these kinds of things as you go. Um, it's going to keep you from getting dizzy, right? You're not going to be as overwhelmed. You're going to be able to learn more things about TFT if you don't have to think about every single thing that you do. So what kind of happens with me is I, I think of my like TFT play as like a little, think of it like a little circle, right? This is what I know how to do in TFT. It's, it's just a little circle. And then what I do is I play what I know. I'm in my circle. But then I'm doing well, and it kind of pulses out. I start playing other stuff. And then I start losing. <laughs> so it condenses. Again, the circle goes back down, but it's a little bigger now. I know a little bit more. I keep winning. I start branching out. Circle gets bigger. This is now all the things that I know about TFT, right? I start losing. It condenses again. But now the circle is even bigger and it just keeps doing that. I keep thinking I, that's how I think of all the things I know about TFT, right? I start small and I get that I get that down and then I try other things, learn some, consolidate it, go back to what I'm good at. Hmm. All right. Love the Seraphine reroll. But if I'm not hitting Seraphine, I actually can just play Senna the entire time. Or if I have very, very good econ and I'm not hitting any of these two drops, I can just level up and go for Lulu reroll. Or if I don't hit that, I can level up to eight and I can play Aria Kali, right? I can do all these kinds of things. You just learn and learn and learn and learn. But for me, it's very helpful to have a strong base to start with. I need something. I need a touchstone, something to keep coming back to. That way I'm not thinking, oh my God, what am I even supposed to do in this game? What the, what do you do with Zach? What is EDM? What the, what the fuck is this? Right? I'm not thinking about that the whole time. I'm thinking more critically about things. I'm thinking this unit was really, really good for me. This item didn't do what I needed it to do. And I'm learning. Uh, that's the most important part. It enables you to learn more. At least I think so. I recommend you don't play flex. <laughs> uh, this, I just talked to a bunch of reasons about why I think you should one trick. Uh, don't play flex. You're going to get dizzy. You're going to get to the point where it's time to pivot and you're going to be like, what the, what the fuck do I do? 
right? You're going to get handed two star Z and you're not going to know what to do with him. <laughs> what items do you put on him? What are you supposed to play around him? What's your front line look like? Man, I bet you really wish you still had that other unit that pairs really well with them, but you sold it because you didn't know that you wanted it, right? Like, it's going to be very difficult. You can play flex later when you already know a couple of different lines, but for now, stick with what you know, get a little bit more comfortable with it, and branch out from there. Uh, I recommend that you focus on learning one AD comp and one AP comp later. Because if all of your items are AD items, if all you have is bows and swords and armors and crit gloves, you can't really play AP with that. So you need to go attack damage instead. <coughs> and you should know at least like one line. All right. I play almost exclusively AP. It's what I enjoy. It allows me to slam items very early and save a lot of health, get win streaks going, because I don't need to hesitate and be like, mm, okay, yeah, this makes Shojin. But if I mix my items the other way, I have Edge of Night and Blue Buff, which is, or Edge of Night and Hand of Justice, which is going to be way better for an AD comp. I know I'm going to just try to play AP. I can slam my items and not really worry about it. Um, I think you should try to find out what feels good to you. Certain units and traits will over and underperform. This is what I mean by all units are not created equal. All everything's not created equal, right? Uh, rapid fire's not a very good trait in TFT right now. It's pretty good to have like one good rapid fire unit in that, you know, like Caitlyn. Caitlyn headliner, that's great. But you're not going to go six rapid fire. It's not very good. <laughs> you won't know that. But when you play it, you'll get an instinctive feel for what's good. The first time I had a Lulu on my board, I was like, damn, Lulu kind of doing the most, right? Now I know how good Lulu is. I have an extra spot on my board. I don't have anything to put in. I'm just going to put in Lulu. She's pretty good, right? You, you're going to kind of learn this stuff as you go. And it helps to, again, like I said, not be so flustered thinking about everything else. You won't be able to notice these things. But if you're kind of used to what the units on your team do and the items that you're giving them do, you'll be able to pick up on things like that a lot easier, right? Uh, and then the last tip is you have to watch TFT content. I am very much guilty of not <laughs> watching a lot of TFT content, but I do make a point to watch some. And every single time I watch like a Frodan video or him um, casting a tournament, not casting, uh, co-streaming a tournament, I learn so much from just like how they talk and everything. I cannot recommend it enough. You should, you should watch TFT content. Okay, so you got better. <coughs> you kind of know what you're doing a little bit. Maybe you're climbing on the ranks a bit. You have two comps that you really like. Maybe just one, but you're comfortable with a couple different directions. What should you do now? TFT is not so scary. You're not getting super overwhelmed every single time you get into a game. Now what do you do? The next big things you should work on are focusing on your streaks and maximizing econ. Money is power, like I said earlier. Uh, and you need to either make more of it <laughs> or make the most of it. Some ways to do this is to really focus on when you can be win streaking and when you can be loss streaking because you get extra money, right, from your win streaks and you get extra money from your loss streaks. If you go win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, you have less money than someone who went loss, 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 loss. I know that sounds unintuitive. You're going to be looking at your board early and going, hmm, yeah, my board's not very strong. So you probably shouldn't spend all your money trying to make it beat the other boards. Because if you don't think you're capable of win streaking, you're just pissing your money away trying to get this win-loss, 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 whatever. Or win-win-loss-loss, loss, right? When instead, you can go for maybe save your money. Hit that 10 early, right? And hit, if you hit 10 early, you'll hit 20 early. You'll hit 30 early. Just take your losses. Don't worry too much about it. And then you can make up that power differential later with the money that you saved, right? Now you have more money. You can transfer it into power, exchange it into more board presence and power. Uh, the same is true with win streaking. If you have a very strong board, you should be expending your resources to keep that win streak going because you don't need the interest as much if you are able to continue winning. It does a lot of things for you. It obviously gets you money with your win streaks, like we talked about. It saves you health. Uh, it gets you to higher levels, giving you access to more powerful units quickly. And it also puts pressure on the rest of the lobby. If people are losing HP, they're eventually going to have to do something or they're going to die. And that is good for you. <laughs> so you kind of need to be figuring out where you're at in your 
your streak. Also, uh, be watching for, on the flip side, be watching for when you're too low tempo. You have a lot of money, but you're losing a lot of health. Maybe you're at like 50 and you're losing fights kind of bad. It's time to spend that money. You need a spike in power level, right? You don't want to go eighth with 50 gold in your bank. I do that a lot. <laughs> Try not to be me, right? Uh, you should start scouting your opponents. You should start looking at your boards. I don't know if you know this, but if you click someone's name or whatever, you literally can just watch whatever they do. Uh, it's incredibly helpful. You should start looking around at all your opponents, seeing what they're playing. Uh, if there's two people who are looking like they're going to go Jinx reroll, maybe don't go Jinx reroll, right? Because it's going to be really, really hard for you to get the units as well if they're also trying to get the units and the same items and everything. Uh, you should plan out your leveling and roll downs in advance. You should be looking at it and going, hmm, uh, I'm going to be saving money. And then after the first PVE round, I'm going to level up to six and I'm going to roll 20 ish gold and I'm going to try to hit these things. You should just start to think about it a little bit, right? Don't, you don't have to go like super crazy. You don't have to be planning exactly, but you should kind of know what your plan is, right? If I'm playing Seraphine reroll, I'm going to do a small roll down at level five to try to fit, hit a Seraphine headliner or something else that I can put in to buy me time. Uh, if I hit Seraphine Headliner, I'm going to go up to 7, usually, because Seraphine 2 is usually enough to get me to 7, and I'm going to slow roll from level 7, meaning I stay at 50 gold to get max interest, and I roll everything above that to try to 2-star up my Echoes, Nikos, and eventually 3-star my Seraphine, right? I have a plan, um, and you should start trying to think about it like that. Think critically about your games in hindsight. Uh, when you lose, you go 5th, sit there and think about it if you could have made it a 4th. Right? Is there something different you could have done? Maybe your positioning sucked. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, what happened? Did you pick the wrong augment? Did you slam the items and they weren't the right items? Did you wait too long to slam items? Should you maybe have played something else? You know, all that kind of stuff. Really, really think about it. Um, you're going to get lucky. You're going to get unlucky. And if you sit there and say, you know what? I got unlucky and I went eighth because I got unlucky. That's not helpful. But if you say, I got unlucky but I'm sure there's something I could have done to turn this eighth into a sixth. That's productive. And you should spend your time thinking about that. Uh, keep a learning mindset. You're not here to win. You're here to get better, right? Winning just happens when you're better. <laughs> so spend your time and your mental energy thinking about how to get better, how to improve, not how to win. That will come with it. And then the last point is watch more content. Um, I feel like that's not surprising. The more you know, the more I find I'm able to pick up from TFT content. In the beginning, it was kind of a blur of words and terms I didn't really understand <laughs> and higher level uh, concepts that I couldn't exactly utilize. Now I know more and I'm able to immediately, more immediately put things into practice that I learn. Uh, and often small tidbits or phrases can leap me forward in terms of knowledge of a specific comper strategy. Very helpful. Watch more content. All right, now you've been playing, you're getting better, but you want to rank up. Here's what you should do. You're more comfortable in TFT. You have some comps that you like to play. Quite a few, actually. You know quite a bit. You're scouting. You're not getting dizzy very often. Um, and you feel you have a grasp on the basics. This is where you should go. Or what I think you should do. One, you should actively scout more. You have to be scouting a lot for various different reasons. We talked about being contested. You need to be looking at um, your opponent's positioning. You need to be looking at um, what the tempo of the lobby is, right? If everyone's hitting three stars and stuff and you're way behind, but you got a lot of money, you're going to have to spend that money or you're going to die, right? In, even if it's like, even if you're just, instead of going for first, you're going for fourth, that's okay. You need to know when it's time to do things like that. Or maybe the lobby is very slow. Everyone's pretty weak. You can really push for that win streak. That is is stuff you'll only know by scouting. Uh, you need to be looking at where, like what your opponents that you're about to face are doing. Uh, are you going up against something that hits grouped enemies? Oh, by the way, if you don't know this, if you look at your opponent's things, they're going to be a little sword icon next to people that you might face next. Just, I didn't know that for like months. <laughs> no one told me. Anyway, so if you look and you're like, oh, wow, Seraphine hits grouped enemies, so I should spread out more. Or, hmm, they have all their damage dealers on the left side, so I should put my main carries on the right side. That way they have to walk through everybody to get to them. These are really important things that will win you a lot of fights. And a couple won fights that would have been losses end up being multiple placements differences, right? You could go second instead of fourth if you just won two more fights. Um, 
So start moving around with positioning. You won't really know what you're doing at first, but just try to think like logically, right? Oh, Lux hits corner to corner. Uh, Akali hits the corners and stuff. They're playing Lux or slash Akali. Let me move my carry to the middle of the back. That way she doesn't get hit. That's it, right? That's like, that's the kind of positioning stuff you need to be doing. Uh, you should think critically about your items. It's not always just slamming Biss because Biss is going to be different. Best in slot, by the way. Uh, is going to be <laughs> different in different games and different situations. You need anti-heal against high healing comps. If there's an Olaf 3 that's tearing through the lobby, you need that Sunfire Cape of Morellas, right? You have to stop that healing. You need magic resistance against the high AP lobbies, right? Uh, there's two Disco players and a Seraphine player. Slam that Dragon's Claw or whatever. Get that anti AP AP if you're if you're slamming Bramble Best because it's what tactics.tools told you to do, but there's only three players left and they're all AP, you're an idiot and you just wasted an entire item. I've I have done it. <laughs> I still do it from time to time. Try not to. You know, it's it's not good. It's bad. Uh this is a really, 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 really big one. Realize when you should play for position and when you should play to win. Not every game can be a first. I harped on this for a while at different points in this video, but there's going to be a lot of spots where you can play to win. You can play to go first, but there's going to be a lot of spots where you're looking like it's going to go. You could, you could, you're, it's looking like you're going to be seventh, but you could also maybe be first if things go really, really, really well. So you're going to be seventh or first if you take this line. But if you do this instead, you could probably squeak a fifth and that's okay. Sometimes you just take the fifth. You just spend your money, make your board stronger, try to beat out this guy and let this guy die before you. And like, that's okay. It feels kind of bad, especially at first, uh, especially for like people like me who come from competitive card game backgrounds, because you're always playing to win. You're not playing to lose less and TFT playing to lose less in a lot of spots is correct. And you should think about that. Not all the time, right? You shouldn't always be playing to lose less. You should be playing to win a lot, but there's going to be spots where it's correct to just Try not to lose as hard. Uh, and then the last big point I have is learn the busted augment lines. This is, again, after you've already kind of learned the basics of TFT. There's going to be some augments, there always are, that have very specific comps that are busted for that patch. Uh, Twin Terror is an example of one. Built different, things like that, where it requires playing a completely different kind of comp. And sometimes they're just absurdly good. If you see it, you should click it every time, and you should build it. Uh, figure out what they are and just learn it. Usually all you need to do is like go look at the stats, see what is drastically outperforming everything else and go watch a YouTuber play it twice or something, right? Just search Twin Terror, <laughs> enter, and then watch someone play it, Sub-Zero Arc or somebody. I don't know, right? Not that hard. Um, and yeah, I think, that, I, think, I think that's my last slide. It's my last slide. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's the stuff I have. Uh, and the one thing I wanted to add that was really big for me was uh, if you can level, this is like a very, <laughs> this is a heuristic, but I found very helpful. If you can level and increase the power of your board and still stay above 30, you should probably just do it every time. Um, very rarely should you not do that because you're only wasting two gold. But if you win the fight, you get one gold back and some health. And that's huge. And even if like, even if you're still going to lose the fight, but now you killed two more units, you just saved, I don't know, like four health or whatever, right? That's pretty good. I'd trade two gold for four health every single time. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my TFT guide. It's a very small TFT guide. Um, again, I tried to make it as accessible as possible to people who are just getting into the game, uh, like me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I went from nothing to masters in a pretty quick time, and I think a lot of other people can too. Uh, let me know if there's something else you want me to talk about. I actually really enjoyed putting this together. Let me know if you like this content at all. This is the first time I've done something like this. Um, so yeah, sound off in the comments. Let me know what's been working for you, what hasn't, uh, what you're confused on, and maybe if you want to see more stuff like this, good luck and ranked, and I'll uh, see you guys next time.